Hello, in this video we are going to use Autodesk Maya to create a simple cartoon rocket. So here you can see a, a cartoon rocket that I quickly sketched out. Um, it's by no means final or pretty art or anything like that, but I'm going to use this as a guideline for the rocket ship I'm going to try to make here in Autodesk Maya. So um, if you want to go this route, you can you can uh, sketch something out in a program of your choice and save out like a JPEG or PNG or any sort of picture and use that as a starting point. Or if you want to try to follow along and use some sort of reference off the internet, you can also do that. When you're using reference for, for, for 3D modeling applications, it's usually best to try to find an orthographic view, i.e. a straight front or side or top view, depending on the circumstances of what you're trying to model. Now, in this particular um, project that we're going to be going through, I'm going to go over a lot of the basic modeling concepts. Um, I won't be covering uh, a lot of the, the introductory in interface, though I will try to narrate that stuff as I go. Just know that if I, if I skip some of that stuff, you might want to refer back to one of my, uh, my interface videos for those kinds of, of, of kind of lessons. So I will try to co cover a lot of basic Maya stuff in this. So um, again, uh, we'll try to cover everything here from creating this rocket ship um, from start to finish. So I've already opened up Maya, got a project open here, and it's a brand new project. And the one thing I do want to cover um, right off the bat um, that a lot of people don't do, um, surprisingly, is Maya is a project-based system. Um, it's absolutely not required for everything you do, but so sometimes if you're doing certain things, if you're using textures and things like that, it's, it might be handy to make a project. Um, other programs follow this method. Um, Maya does not require it, but it is a nice thing to have. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project. Now a project again is just a series of folders that hold images and files and things like that that is associated with the project. And this allows you to switch computers, hand it off to some, somebody else on the team perhaps, and it won't get lost. It keeps all the assets connected. So to create a project, you go up to File, Project Window, and you can change the project by clicking on the new right here in the top right of this particular pop-up window that came up and you give it a name. So maybe I'll call this Cartoon Rocket. And you can place the location of the project anywhere you want to place it. And by default it wants to go into the Documents folder which when you install Maya it creates a Documents Maya Projects folder that houses all the projects for you automatically. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and you can put, and you, and you technically you can put this anywhere you want, but I'm going to go ahead and put this on the desktop for now. So I'm just going to click on this little folder icon and I'm going to choose desktop and hit select. Now all these other folders you can change the name of. I don't recommend it. Um, it's just you can, um, what, what creating project does is creates a bunch of project, uh, fo project folders that it uses to hold things. I like to call it a briefcase for your Maya project. So if I hit accept, it doesn't save anything, it just creates these folders for you to use. So I hit accept here. Uh, cartoon Rocket exists. Oh, looks like I already have one named that. So I'm going to call this Cartoon Rocket Ship. Maybe I did this demo before. Cartoon Rocket Ship. Hit accept, and there it goes. So now I have a Cartoon Rocket Ship folder. Forgive my desktop. right here, Cartoon Rocket Ship folder, that has a bunch of folders in here that are named different things. So um, these folders are common things that Maya needs and save them. The most common two that people will use in their projects are scenes, and, well, technically there's more than that, and, and source images. Source images are anything that goes into Maya, i.e. reference textures, uh, um, uh, reference images, re uh, textures, anything that goes into Maya goes into the source image folder and typically anything that comes out of Maya goes into the images folder. So things that get Maya, when you bring something in, it's going to automatically want to look in a source images folder of the project. So this rocket ship that I just drew, the sketch, would go into the source images folder. I'm going to copy that there. And there's no scenes yet because I haven't saved any scenes, but we have those. And you have my source images folder and there it is. So I just dragged and dropped my my image in there, and I'll need that later. So when I get to the part where I'm bringing in image planes, which I'll do shortly, uh, it has to be, well, it doesn't have to be, but it sh ideally should be in the source images folder. All right, so when you create a project, you only need to do this once, and I've created the project. 
Um, whenever you switch computers or you switch between projects, you do something called setting projects. Um, technically, this project is already set, but I'm going to go ahead and do it to show you. Go File, Set Project, and you would go find that folder wherever it is. Again, it would try to save this to the, 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 the Documents folder, but I put mine on the desktop, so Cartoon Rocket Ship. Set. You don't dive into it. A lot of people make the mistake of clicking on to, to the Scenes folder and going to the scenes folder then clicking on like their Maya file which is the scene file no you don't you know, you, the top top directory so just the, whatever the very first thing whatever you named is what you want so you're going to click on cartoon rocket ship set and you do this every time you switch projects i.e. if you have other projects that you're working on you, and you want them to have their own product you would do this and then whenever you switch computers like if you go to you know work on a different workstation then it's a, you, you set a project, and that's what projects are for. So you can work off multiple computers, or i.e., people, different people on your team might look at it. They can they can set the project, and everything will work the way it's intended. Now, again, you don't have to create projects if you're just trying to do something small. Try to maybe try something. You don't have to create a project for those. It's just when you know you're starting to do major projects, it's generally a good idea to start making these 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 out. All right, this is a project. It's created. It's done. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an image plane. The image plane is the reference that I drew, a little sketch I did, and I'm going to bring that into the front view. Now, you can put it in any view you want, and you can have multiple sketches. I only did one, but I'm going to bring it into the front view. So, again, if you do not see the floor view, it's tapping the space bar to switch between a full view and a four view. So, wherever your mouse is, you tap the space bar, it will it will switch it to the full view and when you tap it again it goes back to the full view. If you do not see the outliner on the left hand side, if just in case you're opening your brand new to Maya, this is called the outliner on the left hand side. This is usually off by default. I like to leave it on. That's this icon right here on the left hand side. Um, we're not, we don't need it quite yet but I tend to leave it always on. So if your view is slightly different than mine, hopefully that helped you get to this part. So in the front view, I'm going to bring an image plane, and how this works is each camera here, each view camera, has its own view menu. If you look at the very top of each view, it has these menus. And if you look at the bottom, you can see which camera it is. This one's the top, this one's the perspective, this one's the side, and this one's the front. So in the front view, I'm going to go view, image plane, import image. You can see since I set my project it's, and already set it, it's automatically looking in the Cartoon Rocket Ship folder, Source Images folder. Now again, if it wasn't there, you could you could still get it into Maya, but if you've ever switched to computers or switched to projects, you might lose that connection, and when you came back and opened it another time, it would be lost or broken, um, depending on, on the situation. So this ensures that it will not be broken. So there you go. You can see it's inside the Cartoon Rocket Ship, Source Images folder, my Rocket Sketch, open. And there's the image plane. Now the image plane is a obviously a reference image. Um, the advantage of this um, is that you can move this around. You can you can size it. You can do all the things. And the one thing it doesn't do, which um, I'll go later, like when later when we go into wireframe mode on our cameras, um, the image planes by default will not go into wireframes. You can actually have 3D models in wireframe and still have the image plane show the image. That's the big advantage over image planes. Other than that, it, it behaves almost like a normal object with a few bit of attribute settings that you can play with. Now there's options here, like for example, I don't like this to be on the grid. I like to be farther back myself. And I'm just grabbing it and using the move tool, which by again, the default key is, that, is the W key. Grabbing the translate tool here, moving it back. Um, and then, um, I'm, I'm not going to really mess with the size. Maybe maybe I'll, I'll have the grid be the bottom. You know, maybe I'll do this, which is fine. There's nothing right or wrong with this. And you can see my drawing is not perfectly symmetrical. That's okay. Uh, this is a very, very loose drawing here. You can see, there we go. I'm moving around. I'm going to tap the space bar on this view to see it full screen. You can kind of see here. Now, um, there's other things you can do. 
Um, you can get to this in either the attribute editor or the channel box, but I prefer to go to the attribute editor for, editor for a lot of these, and you can find the attribute editor on the right hand side in these tabs here. So if I click on these tabs, attribute editor, or if you want this icon in the top right, it's the middle one. This is the attribute editor of the image plane. You have to have the image plane selected, of course, to see it. You can see, none, nothing, there it's selected, attribute editor. Now, there's a couple, these are purely optional. So if you don't like some of these, you don't have to use them, of course. Um, from this point, um, it's on, we have it in here. So anything I do next that you don't like, you don't have to do these. These are just my personal preferences. For example, I don't like personally seeing the image plane in perspective. I like it to only appear in the camera that it's in, and that's the very first setting here. It's what it says. If you want to change it from all views to looking through camera, I'm going to click on looking through camera and it'll turn it off in all the views except for the view that you imported it in. So in my case, the front. Color gain. Uh, this makes the lighter colors dark. Um, this is great if you're working in a darker studio setting. Um, or just, you know, maybe, you know, maybe your eyes are sensitive to the, 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 the bright contrast here since a lot of concepts are generally on white or you know, even like grays. Um, uh, color gain will just tone those down. Some art artists will paint on grays. But like I said, I tend to tone it down a bit, um, just so I, you know, it's not so much contrast. Color offsets the exact opposite, where you take uh, the darks and make them lighter. In my case, eh, I can add it a little bit. It's not a big deal, but I'm getting rid of the black lines and making them more like a dark gray. So you see, I'm trying to bring these together to kind of gray that I mute this out. Um, again, per it's just personal preference. I tend to try to make as less contrast as possible in my reference. Um, and again, color gain and color offset help with that. You're making the, the lights on the color gain darker, and on color offset, you're making the darkers lighter. Alpha gain is straight up transparency. So if you come in here, mess with the alpha gain, you can make this semi-opaque, or however you want. So maybe I'll change this to 70%. Oops, not, not 700, 70. So I'm just going to type in 0.7 and change that to 70%. Maybe I'll even go lower. Um, the rest of the settings I generally don't play with. Um, some of these are for sizing and things like that. I tend to to default to using just the straight up um, the modeling tools. So again, just if you want to make this bigger, you can come in here and scale it up. So hit the R key for scale, and you can just scale it. Um, it's not a big deal since it's a reference image. You don't have to be so uh, precise. If you have like a unit want to lay out unit measurements, that's that's fine. But I, I tend to be a little more rough with this. I'm just kind of I kind of get it in there. So I used to use the W to move it around and the R key, um, which is scale, to scale it up and down. So there we go. We now have our reference image in there, and we have it. we've created a project. And let's go ahead and save this out as a scene. It's a good spot to save a scene. So again, create a project doesn't actually save the scene. You need to do that as well. So I'm just going to go File, Save Scene, and look, it automatically wants to go to where I put it, the desktop, Cartoon Rocket Ship, Scenes folder. And I'm just going to call this Cartoon Rocket Ship, or whatever you want to call it, 01. Just save it out as a, as a Maya file here. So a .mb. So now we are ready to model this. Um, and I'm, I, you know, this this particular thing, like I said, I was just exploratory, a little sketch, trying, you know, doodle doodle here. Um, I may not follow exactly what I do on this, but um, and that's fine. Um, this, you know, if you're, you know, if you're trying to duplicate something more precise, then, you know, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, but in this case, I'm, you know, kind of, I, I want to see what it will look like in 3D. Sometimes my sketches are like okay, and then you know, I kind of make some tweaks as I get to the 3D model here. Now, uh, best thing to do is kind of have a plan to think about this, of course. Um, I'm going to show uh, various different techniques here. I'm already kind of thinking in my head how I would approach this. Um, and there's no one way of doing anything, of course. But I tend to try to make the geometry out of few pieces as possible, that, that, but that does not mean it has to be all made out of one piece. So, for example, I'm going to make this main fuselage rocket part out of probably one piece. This is a little window with little riv like detail rivets on it or something. Maybe a door. Thought about adding a door and some fins, which I'll probably have three. I just didn't, didn't want to put the other one behind here. So, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably try to do most of this rocket in one piece. I will probably 
make the fins separate objects and just stick them literally in the rocket, which is absolutely fine. And then I'll probably do the door and the, the window as a separate, separate pieces as well. Maybe this engine part down here, like the main thruster area, maybe it's its own piece as well. Because I'm thinking, I have this idea of doing like a broken up um, exhaust area that I might try. And then I'll probably also do like this antenna. So there's actually quite a few pieces here. But what I won't do um, is I, I'm thinking about having these like grooves in here. I probably will not make this out of, you know, separate plates. I will not probably make these bands out of separate pieces. I'll probably do something called an extrusion to create these. At least I'll give that a try. I'll probably do the cone as, as an extrusion on the, on the top. So I'm kind of having this plan formulate in the back of my my mind. And this is something you just kind of get from experience. And again, this is not the only way of doing this, but you know, you kind of have to kind of build something, find out what works, what doesn't go wrong, what works and what doesn't, and then next time you build it, you do it better. So, um, how you generally build these things is you, you know, kind of like most things, we're going to take a rough primitive that's closest to it, in this case probably a cylinder, and we're going to start with that. So I'm going to come in here and create a cylinder. I'm going to tap the space bar, so I'm going to the perspective view, and I'm going to drag this out. I have interactive creation on, so I'm just going to drag this out, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it, and then I'm going to drag it up. You can see there's my cylinder. All right. Now you can go into the input settings of the cylinder and manipulate it. Now I can do this in various ways, but since I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Is I'm going to go ahead and tap the four key in this screen so I can see, which is switches to wireframe. And then I'm going to go ahead and come in here within the inputs and maybe tweak these numbers a bit. And I'm actually pretty darn close when it comes to the height. But I'll go ahead and make it just 12 for even numbers for right now. Maybe the radius I will make, you know, three just for easy, even numbers, but honestly, it doesn't matter. Um, section rate, uh, subdivisions along the axis is how round it is. Um, I have a tendency to, to regret not making this rounder. So maybe I'll come in here and add a few more divisions to get this more smooth. Um, but honestly, 20 was pretty good. But I'm just going to go ahead and try 30. Um, and you can see I've added divisions. Now subdivisions on the height, we can add some more. Come in here and type the number. Or again, other ways you can manipulate these attributes, all of these, for, for example, is you can click on the word and middle mouse drag in any of these windows. You can also add divisions this way. Or change these numbers, I should say, this way. Now I'm going to go ahead and maybe go up to like 8 or so. Because um, the reason I'm doing this is, again, you know, I have a little bit of forethought what I'm going to be doing. You guys can't read my mind, but I'm going to come in here and probably use um, soft selection to try to shape this. Now, now there's a lot of different ways we could do this. We could have drawn Bezier curve, or they call it NURBS curve in here, and revolved it. We could do all kinds of things. So, I mean, so this is just my first, my first idea that I'm going to try doing. I'm going to drop it to 10. And then subdivision along the caps, that is up here. Um, we theoretically could use a cap, maybe for this, maybe I will build this out as, you know, this is a little, little part, this part right here, as, as this, and then just do a sphere on top. So maybe I could use a cap, maybe I'll try a cap, maybe I'll have two caps, why not? You know, and I can always come in here and tweak this after the fact if it doesn't quite work. Granted, we have to use different tools at that time. Alright, so the inputs, I have this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into subcomponent mode and try to shape this. Um, I'm actually going to reduce my my division some, drop this to eight maybe, maybe even six because I tend to what I tend to like doing. Oops, not 866, not 66. One more try, six. I tend to prefer to have fewer divisions and then add them as I need to go as I go. Um, I don't think I plan on adding divisions on on you know around here. That's why I did 30. But here I'm definitely going to be shaping this around this way, and it's going to be a lot easier to do that with uh, less divisions. And I can always add more later, but I'd be using different tools for that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and hold on this, go into subcomponent mode, and I'm going to select vertex, a vertices for the plural term here, ver vertex mode, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the top ones here. Now again. 
We can use our W, E, and R keys to manipulate these just like we would any object. So W key translate, E key rotate, R key scale. And right now, um, this is a, you know, the standard mode is one to one space. So I can come in here and I, I can come in here and go, okay, I'm going to scale all these to here, select the next row, and I'm just dragging a box, clicking holding on my front view and dragging a box. You know, we can definitely do that. That would totally work. I have this reference image. I can get there eventually. Um, um, but there is other ways of doing this. So I'm going to do this um, slightly different ways. We can also select the top ones here, for example, and hit the B key, the Bravo key on your keyboard. Now, the Bravo key on your keyboard will turn on something called soft mode, select mode. What it does is it will highlight the vertices that, that you have selected or any subcomponent mode with the color yellow. And then what it will do, depending on how big your model is and what your, your settings were before, it will have like an orange or red drop off and this is kind of like, looks like what I call it a heat map this is the area that it's influencing so if you don't see anything at all like maybe it's like this just yellow you need to make your uh, select bigger which I'll go in a minute or if it's way big maybe with the whole thing turned yellow it's too big and you need to make it smaller now so you can visually see what it's affecting now if you want to adjust the size of this selection you hold down the Bravo key and you just click and drag your mouse in this viewport. So I'm just clicking and holding, and I can drag left and right to make this, this soft selection bigger or smaller. And again, wherever it's yellow, it's 100%, and it kind of fades into orange, to red, to black, and then, it, then nothing down here. So this is a percentage, I don't know exactly what it is, 75, 50, 25, 15, whatever it might be. Um, percentage of, of it affecting uh, of a fall off. So if I m move or scale these, it'll affect the other ones at a lesser percentage. So if I come in here and scale this now, you get a much more mushy ter technical term there, mushy result. Um, so this is just one way of working. And you can drag, you know, again, hold on the B key, drag back and forth, and you kind of have to dial these in. Now, if you don't like that, that's fine. You can just come in here again, hit the, tap the B key, turn it off, and you can just do these one at a time. But you could also kind of get that that selection uh, kind of going with just straight up the, the soft select. So you can see I'm just coming in here and doing these one at a time. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring this all the way to the bottom. And my drawing's not the greatest, so you can see it's not lined up on both sides because I just free draw, draw, drew it inside the program. So you can see I need one. I need more divisions, obviously. And I'm going to need to, to kind of manipulate these. So I'm going to mostly focus on the left-hand side here. All right. And I can also move these edges where I need them as well. So I'm, I, I might do that as well. Um, so <clears throat> to add geometry, we can use the multi-cut tool. Uh, it is found under, I believe, mesh tools. Uh, maybe edit mesh. Uh, yeah, multi-cut. Um, I don't really go through the menus too much if there is a quick key for them. In this case, the multi-cut tools quick key is control shift hex, which you can hopefully you saw that cursor there change. The multi-cut tool allows me to make different kinds of cuts. Um, the default cut is if I just click on here and drag, click and click and click, I'm just moving the mouse and clicking, I can make free cuts and you can see it cuts here. If I drag to a corner, it will go to the edges, so it will snap, thankfully, for example. It'll snap, so it'll continue from there. I want to do that. Um, and I can just keep going as much as I want until I come back around or and close it. Or I can just hit return at any, or enter at any point in time and, and close this, and it makes this cut. This is absolutely not what I want to do, but I want to show this, this is the default method of the, the tool. So I'm going to do that. You can also with the multi-cut tool, hold down control, and you can hover over a vertical or horizontal edge loop. These are edge loops, the, the lines here. And if you hover over an edge loop, it'll draw perpendicular to whatever um, edge you're hovering over. So I'm, I'm in the multi-cut tool, I'm holding down the control, I'm not clicking on anything on the mouse, I'm just moving the mouse around. And you can see, if I'm over a vertical one, it's gonna wanna draw a horizontal edge loop as well. 
if I'm I, over the over, over a horizontal one, it's going to want to draw a vertical one. Now, a couple quick things on here. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but an edge loop cannot cross um, cross through tries. See, it stops at the try at the top there. This is, I made this out of a cylinder or inside of polygon. So it can only cut across quads. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. When I come up here and cut this, if I were to do it this way, it would cut an edge in there. It just would stop at the triangle at the top and bottom. So that's a quick note on that. Okay, so now what if I want to add an edge loop in here? All I do is, again, hold down Control and click, and it'll add an edge loop. You can also hold down Shift, actually, I'm sorry, and Snap, kind of. So if you want to try to get increments, I think it's set to default of 10%. It will it will estimate the the, the, the degree of increments here, and you can snap this. So if you hold on shift as well as control, it's, you can see it kind of snaps. So I want this to be right in the center. I can do that right there. Or you can let go of shift and just eyeball it and put it in yourself. So you can see I'm just going to eyeball these two. All right. So um, that, again, that's a persistent tool, um, it meaning you have to exit it. So to get out of it, um, use any one of your, your, your standard. I use, usually use any one of my standard tools. I usually hit the W key, which is the translate tool. And that will take me out of it. Okay, now we have this rocket here. Um, you can see that it needs some help. I need some more multi cuts. I need to, you know, position these. I, you know, I need some more divisions. It needs a lot of things. So, but you know, don't try to do it all at once. You're gonna, you're gonna make it more confusing. So I'm gonna work from the bottom up. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click this edge loop here. And I see this is like a like a graded inset. I'm just going to kind of double click that edge loop, which makes it select the whole edge loop. And I'm going to scale this up. And again, I'm not even bothering to pay attention to the right side because my drawing again was um, inferior in that regard. So I just kind of just kind of did it. All right. So I'm going to move this down and then scale it up a little bit. All right. You can also slide an edge if you want, or if you want to get rid of an edge for some reason, you can um, do that as well. To delete an edge, you can hit Control Delete. That will delete an edge and its corresponding ver vertices. Or, again, like I say, you can slide an edge or up and down. What that means is it will try not to, if you move this, for example, move this up, it does this kind of thing. So I mean, eventually I might, I want that for down here, because I'm going to do this kind of kind of thing. Maybe I'll scale this down, move this up, maybe something like that. Maybe I'll even come and in, even inset the sum. So if we look at this over here, you can see it kind of does this kind of thing. But if you don't want to do that, you want to slide the edge, for example. Let me go back to where it was. Sliding an edge tries to tries to preserve the, the general shape of the object, just tries to move the edge uh, as opposed to moving it. Um, slide edge is found under uh, mesh tools. Slide edge. Uh, I don't know if you have to have an edge selected when you start this, but if you do, you click on slide edge, and then after that, it's drag middle mouse to slide. And you can see I'm just clicking on the middle mouse button as a button, and I'm dragging it, and it's trying. It, I mean, it sh it moves it a little bit, but it tries to preserve that. So in some cases, you might want to space the geometry out, but you don't really want to change the shape. Um, so that's sometimes useful. All right, so I'm going to go back to the translate tool. I am going to go ahead and just put this inset down here right now. Just get this out of the way. I'll talk about how to do this in different some other ways. I think I'm just going to actually put it inside. I like the way that looked. So maybe something more like this. And you don't. I mean, at least you know it's up to you. I don't have. I'm not following. You know, if I break away from my my uh, my my reference here, I'm fine with that. So I might do something like that. Here's a case where I might slide this edge because I think this is a big, very big gap here. Um, I've already added it as an icon. So I'm going to go down the slide edge again. And then I might slide this one up because I'm going to go ahead and shape this and then worry about. And then I, again, you can, you can do this as however you want. I'm going to slide this one up. I'll just move this one up actually and scale it. So this will probably be my, my band right here. And again, you can see it doesn't match because my drawing, I kind of 
false perspective that maybe I'll even bring this down a little bit but there's gonna be my first band actually I think I'm gonna bring this down just a little bit because I don't like it that high and this is what I mean by moving away from your reference that would be my first band right there I'm gonna come in here and add a multi cut control shift X I'm in the multi cut tool I'm gonna hold down control I just want to get an and shift I want to get an edge loop in here to help on this out a little bit just a little bit that'll be my first band then I think I'm gonna control shift X again I'm gonna add a band here and here and again I'm holding down control and then I'm gonna slide this edge up mesh tool slide edge I'm gonna slide this to th this top part right here. I, I like to block in these these sections first. As you can see, I'm getting the the bands and these these separations um, accounted for. Now, if you find yourself using a tool like you can see, I like the slide edge tool quite a bit, especially for something like this. If you find yourself using a tool a lot. Um, and it doesn't have a quick key, you can go into the preferences inside a quick key, of course. The other thing you can do, which I'm not going to cover in this video, the other thing you can do is you can create a custom icon shelf here. As you can already see on mine, I have some. If you go to the custom tab, there's all these icons. And again, for those that are not familiar with my, these are icon representations of everything in the menus. I personally don't like them as an instructor. At least they make it hard to talk about where to go. But I do use a few of them in my work as well. So the custom one is, if you've never done this before, will probably be blank. Um, and what you can do is you can hold down Control and Shift and come up into the menu and click on whatever tool you want and it'll add it to, to the custom uh, bar here. So again, I'm holding down Control and Shift. I come up here and I'll just click on any one of these. I'll click on the Connect tool. And you can kind of see its icons, this little box thing. Control and Shift, it adds it. And there you go. There it is. It's right there. Um, if you don't want something, or maybe you made a mistake, you can just right-click on it and delete it, and it'll take it off that menu. So the slide icon for me is right here. So um, I, I won't talk about um, how to get to that again, but again, last time for the last time, uh, it's under Mesh Tool Slide Edge, or you can see, you'll see me now go up to the top with my icon. I don't use it enough where I make a quick key out of it, but I do use it a bit. I will use probably a bit for this this particular project. So it's very situational. So you saw me, I just uh, inserted a, a multi-cut tool there, you know, control shift X, you know, I'm kind of refining these. All right, same thing up here, find out what this is. Uh, I think I'm gonna slide this one up. And I think I'm gonna add one in the middle because I think we're gonna thin this up here as well. Thin that up a little bit, and then come in here, Control Shift X, just to get a little more divisions in here. Maybe something like that. Okay, so you kind of see I'm shaping this as I go. All right. So let's see what we look 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 like here. Not bad so far. Got that going. It's always a good idea to take a look. I should probably should do this a long time ago. Look at this from all the views. Make sure you're not making mistakes. Um, sometimes when you guys, when you're especially beginners, if you're doing this, you might accidentally scale the wrong way, do some like weird. Um, you should, especially if you're starting out, you should probably be looking at it in all four views. Um, just tap spacebar again. You know, if you like spacebar or full view, make sure you tap the spacebar and check occasionally. Now, a couple things. Now, Grant, I can't promise that I'm gonna, you know, get you're gonna get all the same results as me. I can just talk about what's happening on mine, and hopefully you guys remember these. Um, as we go, like for this right here, I moved this in here. It looks a little bit weird. I want more of a sharper transition. What happened here is Maya is softening these normals, which is um, normal. Um, and what we can do is we can make this a much more crisp edge by selecting these edge loops here and making them hard edge. Um, so if you double click on an edge, and you can do more than one at a time. So I hold down shift and double click on the other one. I want these to be hard edges. And I, to change them from soft, which they are currently, to hard edge, you go to mesh display, hard edge. You can see I already added it. And there's also a soft edge one. So I have a soft edge on my bar already, as well as a hard edge. So I'm going to click on hard edge. And I'm going to go back to object mode by right-click and holding. You can see there it is. 
It's more, much more of a hard edge now. Um, this one, let me take a look here. Yeah, I think I want a hard edge right here as well, because this is kind of it's going to be a pretty big tra a transition. I'll make that a hard edge as well. So you can see it's just got a hard edge now. And then what we're going to do, and yeah, you can come in here and make the same argument for the band, but what we're going to do is I'm going to actually use the extrude tool to get these out, which I haven't talked about in this video yet. Um, so I'm going to do that next, but one last thing. Let me double check something real quick. I can probably get away with making this thing as just a single. No, I'm going to have to add a loop in here um, to get that. So uh, let's go ahead and do that before we move on to the next thing. So I'll, I'll insert an edge loop in here. I'm just going to put it at the top because I accidentally pulled this too much. So and then what I'm going to do, and you can see we tap in the space bar. Apologize if I move around in there. I'm going to go ahead and scale this in. I'm sorry. I just want the top faces. So I'm going to select the top part here by just dragging a marquee box. Then I'm going to just I'm gonna hold down control, which deselects. I'm going to drag a marquee across the bottom half. And what that will do is it gives me the top ones here. Now you can come in here and click on these one by one if you want to. Hold down shift and do that, but I find that tedious. So again, um, use your views to your, your advantage. Click and hold, drag a marquee box across the top half. I don't want this particular this second ring, so I have the top part and the second ring selected. So again, I drag a box around that. Anything it selects, it touches, it's going to select. So then I'm going to hold down control, which is deselect, and then only get the bottom part and deselect. That's much quicker, generally. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down and scale it in. You can flat. You can also use the scale tool to flatten it to itself. Now maybe I will get all of those, just because I want to make sure they're all flat. And I'm just using the scale tool to flatten it to itself. And then you can always come back in here, and then I should have flattened it first, I'm using the control key to get rid of some of these. And I, I don't know how big I want this. So I'm, I don't know if I want it to be this big or this big. So I'll maybe I'll just do that. And I could just pull the top point up, which honestly, I think I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into vertex mode, grab this vert, vert here, and just bring this back up. So that's obviously too thin. Now that I can see it, it's way too thin. So I can come in here and select these verts. F key will frame whatever you have selected. So I'm just looking to make sure I have everything. Don't be afraid to tap the 4 key to make sure, you know, wireframe. I'm just double checking. I don't have anything accidentally selected. Scale. You can see I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Now I'm not worried about this point because there shouldn't be a point up there. It should be thicker. And technically, if I were to turn this into a face, it would probably be a little bit better. But um, for right now, I'm just going to go with this. And that maybe I'll come back later and add that point in there. So it's going to look something like this. And then eventually I have a sphere on top that will hide that thing, that that point. So we won't see that point right there. We'll see there'll be a sphere on top of it. So uh, for now that's good. You know, uh, maybe I'll come back and change that later. All right. So let's go ahead and start um, add, adding some extrusions in here. Um, for example, let's start with the easy ones. Let's start with these faces that will be these bands here. Now, if you're in face mode, by right-clicking and going to face mode, and you want to select a face ring or loop, how you do that is you select one face, and then you hold down shift, and you double-click an adjacent face, and it'll go that direction. So if I double-click this now, it'll go all the way around, because it's a loop, all the way around, and select all those faces. Now, just you know, while I'm here and talking about this particular topic, if you do faces and you click on one, and let's say you skip a few and then hold down shift and double click face, it'll only go from that distance to that distance, like that. So if you wanted for some reason to select, maybe, maybe you're going to make a window, or I, I don't know this, but you can do a, a piece, or if you, again, if you do two that are side by side, so one face, hold down shift, double click an adjacent face, it will, it will do a face loop all the way around. If you double click the same face, it selects the whole object. 
So there you go. I have this face ring here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool called the Extrude tool. Now the Extrude tool, um, I covered this in other videos. If you want to know more about the Extrude tool, I definitely advise that you you know reference, you know, look at them. Um, I'm, I'll go over it in a little bit of detail here. Um, but the Extrude tool is like the hammer of the modeling toolbox. It's the most used tool, in my opinion. Um, you know, at least in my workflow um, out there. So um, Extrude tool works in all modes technically. Um, it's most commonly used in face. So you can see I have these faces selected. And what I'm going to do is when I extrude these, I'm going to pull those faces out. So I hit Control E to enter the extrude tool because it has a quick key. And what it's going to do is whatever the first selected face was, it's going to change the nomen, which is the manipulator here, and put it at the position of the, the face. So no longer are we moving what's called world space. We're moving in what's called normal space. And most of the time when you're, you're working in this mode, the, the blue arrow changes from Z to normal. And what you're going to be grabbing is the blue arrow. That's what I said. Most of the time you're going to be grabbing this. And you're going to pull this outward. And you can see it's pulling geometry out. Now, I, I must caution you that if you make a mistake, be sure that you undo back. Because I'm not going to go into detail what, what, you know, what a double transform is or a double extrusion is. I'm sorry. But um, it, they can cause problems. Um, uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll make one a little bit later in the lecture or a follow-up lecture. That way I can show you how to fix them. Um, but try to avoid that. You know, if you, if you, again, and you're not at all sure, maybe do enough undos to, that you know that you're back far enough. In fact, you know what, I might have to go over it now anyway. Um, because if you do a double extrusion and then you click off of it and you come back here and you start moving things around, you start getting this kind of result. And yes, I will show you how to clean that up. But it's best to obviously just undo while you're there, if you're aware of it, and go back. Um, it'll be quicker. So again, I just undid back. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up a bit. And I'm just going to pull this band out a bit. And I'm just kind of eyeballing how thick do I want this band to be. Again, I'm doing a very cartoony one. So maybe I'll make this like a little over the top thick. Um, something like that. There's that one. Now, um, technically, I'm going to stop because, I mean, I don't... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about, you know, this is a mistake, how I did this. Because the mistake I did was not necessarily a mistake, but I missed an opportunity. I should do the one down here at the same time. Granted, if you wanted to, you can memorize this number or come back and look at it later to figure it out so you get the exact same translate. That is also possible. So if I wanted to do like 0.1, I can do that. So you can either memorize this one or you're going to write it down and come back and do the next one, or you can just do them both at the same time. Because extrusion will allow you, so I'm just going to do back. Extrusion will allow you to come in here and do multiples. So if I do this band at the same time, and again, I slipped it this exact same way, I held on shift, clicked on this face down here, then held on, and I'm still holding on shift, and double clicked the one next to it, it also selected that face loop. If you're having a hard time with that, um, double clicking, Remember, you can just come in here, and totally just drag boxes, trying to get my face back into face mode. And here we go, face mode. Um, if you're having a hard time with that, remember, you can just come in here and drag a small box in your front view or side view and just get those. So hold on shift and drag small boxes. That's another way of doing that. So you can see there's lots of ways of doing anything in programs such as Maya. So now that I have these two faces at the same time, I can control E. And I can do both of these these at the exact same time, give them the exact same translate. Uh, just for the sake of it, why not? Because we talked about it, I'll make them all 0.15 or something. Something really thick. I think I want to go over the top, like cartoony thick here. So there's my, uh, my, my, my start of my bands there. You know, like I said, uh, I'm not going to, you know, obviously match that swoop there. Because, you know, that's more of a mistake in my drawing. Um... We can come in here and potentially, now I have this vision of these being like these these broken up pieces here, which I don't, you know, I, could, I don't want to do this as an extrusion. I don't want to do this as extrusion. Um, this top part, I'll do this as an extrusion. Um, so really, I mean, the bands and then this top part, I want this out. And again, I could come in here and do the same thing I did at the very bottom, just use the multi-cut tool. But I'll go ahead and use the, the extrude. And this should be have an interesting result. I'll, I'll probably create an extra edge I don't need up here, but I can use that to soften this. So that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select these top ones. I did not select the, this very, very top pieces here. And I'm going to hit Control-E. And 
kind of look at this from the other view, bring this out, and I'm going to go ahead and keep this edge right here, like as is. But you can see I created something up here I didn't want. Now, again, I can just come in here and select these edges and refine this. And this is what I meant by I'm going to make an edge I probably don't want, which I, I wanted to round this out anyway, so I kind of knew that was coming. And I kind of actually like the way that looks. Happy accidents here. Maybe I'll keep that. Um, I think I think with the bevel, this might look kind of cool, um, which will be the next topic that we're going to go into. So a bevel is um, my second most used tool in, the, in, in, in modeling. What a bevel does is it turns an edge into a face. So if I take an edge here and double click on it, and again, you can bevel multiple, multiple subcomponents, but if I take an edge here and I bevel this, um, it has a quick key called control of, of control B. If I bevel this, it takes this edge and turns it into a face. So it's like that. And it has a couple properties in here that I, you know, that I think are worth going over. But fraction is the distance to the shorter edge. So if I did this to one, it's gonna go all the way to the, the other one, which typically you don't want to do. Um, but maybe you so you can drag this back and forth. And I'm just clicking on the word here, dragging back and forth. And then the segments is how many faces it got turned into. So right now I just did one. So I took that edge and turned it into one. And if you want it to be more, um, more, you can. And, and the one thing that's nice is it automatically chamfers or rounds us out as they increase the segment. So if you want it to be round, semi-rounded or rounded, they added five. You can see it rounding that out. Um, the depth can be changed to be a negative value or a positive value to kind of go inset depth bevel or an external bevel. Or if you want maybe to tone it down, you can tone it down as well. Um, I tend to do go all in, either one or negative one, but you know whatever you want. Um, the other ones I don't really use too much, but they you know you know they're, they're, I'm sure they have their uses. Now I'm undoing this because I'm going to go back to the same you know idea when I was talking about um, you can do more than one operation at a time. So if I double click this edge, double click this edge, double click this edge, and I'm holding down Shift. As I double click these to add the all four of these, and I'm, I'm probably going to, because I'm going to make all the bevels the same on this, these ones will be different bevels. If I do them, they'll have a different bevel depth, so I'm not worried about those. But these bands, I'm going to share the same, all the same kind of bevels. So I'm going to do them all at once. Control B, control, and then I'm going to change the fraction, maybe increase the fraction a, a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I don't really have a plan on this. I think it's a little too um, too big of a bevel. Maybe I'll do something a little smaller. Oops, not that small. Maybe 0.4. You can kind of see. Kind of, I personally kind of like that one. And you know, take a look at this. And again, I've kind of got that rocket ship thing going. Now, if you don't have a poly count a limit, or if you have poly counts to spare, if you're doing video game development type thing, bevels are great for catching edges of light. Um, so they really come in nice. Um, I always recommend bevels. Some people don't like them because, you know, they add poly count. But at the same time, I tend to like them because, you know, we can we can do we can get some shape in here. I'm I'm going to try beveling this inner one because I just want to try something. So I'm gonna, and that's what this is all about, experimenting. Control B. Um, I'm going to change this to a negative fraction. Increase the segments. Um, oops, missed. Increase the segments. You can see we can get kind of this... Like almost maybe if I want to do like a rubber thing in there, or if I want to do something more coned. Um, I kind of like this, but I don't think I like it enough to, to incorporate in the design. Maybe, I don't know. Let me take a look. Let me back up. I can always undo object mode. And I don't care for it. But, you know, the important thing is we tried it. So I'm going to go ahead and bevel this edge, but I really am going to do a very, very minor bevel here. Just, I'm going to leave it at one segment. I'm going to tone down the fraction just a couple. So 0.2. Uh, same thing up here. I kind of liked what this did, but I definitely want to put a bevel on this myself. Yeah, I like that myself. The other people are probably looking like, what the heck are you doing? But I like that. So I'm going to leave it. All right. So I'm going to come down here and look down here. See what I look at my reference here. I think I want to make this more pronounced. I don't think it's pronounced enough, even though my reference drawing it's matching up better. Again, this is your choices. These are your choices you make as an artist, especially if it's your own work. If you're not, not you know, if it's your own work, you know, something saying you can't switch it. Of course, slide the edge a little bit more. 
Slide the edge a little bit more. Uh, slide this edge a little bit more. I might even come in here and add a third edge in here, but I think that's good enough for right now. Okay, so there we go. We got this main fuselage area. Um, I might even come in here and do a, a slight bevel on uh, extrusion on this, um, just to kind of get this to be a more pronounced shape. So we can actually, here's a nice little, actually this is not what I intended to do, but let's do this. Let's go ahead and bevel this edge right here, if you're, if you're doing something like this. Very small, you notice I made it huge. That's another way of rounding things out, by the way. I'm going to make this really tiny fraction, 0.1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this face ring here. Again, click on one face, double click the next face. And I'm going to extrude this in slightly to give it more of a gap. I want it to be obvious that there's some piece here. And I'm just going to scale this down a little bit. Now, we can see what that looks like. Little, little details like that. When you wanted to maybe add like a groove or something. If you want to actually model it in, it's pretty easy to do. All right. So I'm kind of taking a look here. I'm about to call this main fuselage done at some point here soon. Um, I do like how this tapers a little bit more. I don't think my tapers enough um, to do this, though I'm going to do it the reverse way. I'm going to actually make this go out more. And again, I'm moving away. In the spirit, I'm doing the same thing, but I'm moving away from my reference. I have the luxury of doing that because this is my own, my own work. If I thought this wasn't rough enough, it's on the edge. I'm, I could bevel this edge. Control B. You can see. It just basically made that. And then I'll slide one of these edges down to make this geometry even. So there we go. So you can see I'm coming in here and adding geometry as I go. All right. I'm going to go ahead and save this out again, just in case, you know, bad things, have computers crashing and things like that. There we go. So now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to some other piece. Now, um, I still want to do the window, which that shouldn't be too hard. I have a funny feeling the doors might be a little trickier, but let's get the main pieces. I always tend to work on the biggest structures and then move to the smallest ones. So the next one I'm going to work on here is this wing or fin or whatever the heck it would be called in a rocket ship right here. Now. I did mention how we want to use the most basic shapes as we go. If it's mostly a cube, start with a cube. If it's a cylinder, start with a cylinder. What happens when it's something weird like this? Granted, you could argue this is a cube. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and use a different tool to show you guys this one. And it's called the Create Polygon Tool. Now, the Create Polygon Tool works best if you do it in an orthographic view. It doesn't matter which one. Um, in this case, the front, and it's perfect for, for this. So the Create Polygon tool is found under, um, let me look, let me, I forget a lot of times where things are in the menus, I thought it was under Mesh Tools, there, uh, there it is, I was correct, it is the fourth tool roughly from the top uh, called the Create Polygon tool, um, if you click on this it will bring up a cursor that is, and, and a message that says click to place vertex is press fit to finish press enter. So it's very similar to um, the, the uh, actually the multi-cuts default way of working. I come in here on the ortho view and I just start clicking. And I can create these lines. And what I'm doing is I'm tracing my reference. Now it is really up to you how far you want to take this. Uh, for example, I'm going to probably come down to here. I want the little like this little flat area. Um, click there and click here. And then on the way back, just as a vice, I try to match, at least to some degree, the amount of points. And I'll talk about that why a little bit later. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I try to as I go. Nope. There we go. And then at some point, I don't care about the inside part here, at least not yet. Um, if I hit enter, it will commit the tool. And what that looks like is it'll be a very flat looking piece of geometry. So it's just a flat plane, if you ever used planes before, but of whatever you drew it as. Um, now I can extrude this, like people are already probably getting ahead and like, oh I can extrude this, give it some thickness, and that's exactly what we're going to do. But before you get there, what you should do 
is you should cut this up and get all the, the geometry, obviously the way you want it before you, you go that far. So again, let's come in the vertex mode, you know, get these mo moved the way you want, follow the shape, because it's 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 not impossible to move it later, it's just it's just more work. Because once it has three dimensionality space, you'll have to move it in all those you'll have to move more vertices. So if you do it now, if you, if you cut it up now and you do it now, it's actually less work. So just come in here and get these all moved, get them all the exact way you want. because uh, a lot of people want to go straight to 3D pretty fast on this. And add those point, get those points in there. Oops. All right. Now I mentioned this is an inside a polygon because it's one gigantic inside a polygon. I don't think I have the exact amount matched here, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and use the multi cut tool and try to make this as many quads as I can. Um, it just will be cleaner in the long run for me. So maybe I'll move this one up here. I know what I'm going to do is use the multi cut tool. And this is the very the default function of the multi cut tool is what we're going to use. So control shift X for multi cut tool. And I'm just no, no, nothing on the keyboard, just click and drags here. Click and drag, click and drag. You can see I dragged from one vert to the next. And you don't have to do this in any particular order, but what I'm doing is I'm converting these all to quads. And again, for those maybe are not familiar with this, a quad is a four sided shape. One, two, three, four. We want to try to do this as much as possible because Maya's tools generally work better across quads. All right, and I do think this was better over there, so maybe, well, it doesn't really matter. I can just put it here, and I can move these around. So I, I hit the W key to exit that. And I'll move these around, kind of get this shape. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And it's all quads, which, again, should make your life easier down the road. Got the shape. Now I'm going to go into object mode, and again, you can do the extrude and face mode, but as I mentioned, it does work in all modes. If you use it on an object, especially a plane in this in this fashion, it will just give it depth. So hit control E, grab the blue arrow, and pull. Um, if you, for some reason, it turns solid black, just, just grab the arrow and go the other direction. What this denotes in solid black in, in Maya, it means it's inside out. So just if the other direction. And if you have to move it after the fact, that's not a big deal. So just make it whatever you want, but thickness wise. So there we go. I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to taper this, I think, a little bit. So maybe I'll do a little bit thicker up here. And then I'm going to thin it down here. So again, try to think ahead. It helps, obviously. Um, and then you can see my pivot point um, on this particular action is here. That's not a big deal. Um, but certain operations that you do will automatically default the pivot point, i.e. this gnomon here, to the to, to the origin. And this is, was, one of, was one of them. If you ever want to move this pivot point um, back to the center of the object, there isn't a quick key for it that I'm aware of, but um, there is a quick option in the menu called under Modify, Center Pivot. And this will move it, the, op, the pivot's point to the center of the object. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, um, I, I was building, but make sure you always try to build along the grid. It'll make your life easier. You can see I'm a little off here, and this is off because I dragged out that way. Um, it will make your life easier in the long run if you try to keep this aligned with the grid. I'm a little off, so I'm going to go ahead and correct this now. And again, this one's pivot point is probably correct. It might not be completely centered, but if I select this one and do center pivot, it moved up a little bit. But I'm more concerned about it in the top view in this particular case. So I can move this around. I can I'm try to keep this in the center. And again, this is the origin in Maya, the zero 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 space. Um, in this case, it's, it's you know I'm only seeing it in two dimensions, but you know here would be three. Um, I'm concerned to try to get it aligned here. So again, what you can do is after you've centered your pivot or moved your pivot to where you want, you can drag drag this around. And if you hold on the X key and you do it, you can grid snap. You can see I grid snapped that to the center. I'm going to grid snap this as well, and you can see I'm just snapping these so they they align better. And again, this will this will this will favor you the farther you get into into more complex objects. All right, 
So now, with this here, um, I can either bevel the edges first, or I can start, maybe if I wanted to taper this, like you said, I want to taper it at the bottom, or maybe I want to taper it in the, in the, in the top, I don't know, maybe I want this the bottom to be really, I don't, be, I don't do that too often, maybe I want this to be super thick on the bottom. Uh, let's try that. Um, maybe I'll select this face, select the B key, and just scale this. I'm going to scale just in the Z. So you get this kind of thicker result, and then it thins, which is a little weird. Or maybe I'll do it in the center, I don't know. So I'll tap the B key, turn this off. I just moved it slightly so I can see it. So back to object mode. So yeah, it's interesting. Get happy accidents here, or just to trying different things. I kind of liked it. I wanted to taper, but I, I kind of have the idea now that I'm thinking about it. it makes sense because the rocket's going to be standing on these shapes here. Alright, so yeah, sure, why not? We'll go with that. Now what I'm going to do, and um, after I kind of like the taper, it's not maybe not completely done, but I want to start adding, you know, softening this out or rounding up these forms. So maybe I'll double click this edge, this edge, um, I think I'm going to do these ones differently, but I'm going to, because um, I'm going to do a different bevel on these, a different size bevel. So I'm just, I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to bevel these, and I'm going to increase the fraction a whole lot, and I'm going to increase the segments a whole lot. Now, if I want to come in here and, um, you know, really various, which, which I do, what is probably a good idea to do is don't do it yet. Just kind of do, maybe do a one fraction. And then what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try this. In fact, I'm actually going to do this completely because this brings me to a good strategy. If you like this shape and you want to try to do something and you're not sure exactly because you've never done it before, make copies of things. So I'm just going to control D and duplicate this and move this out of the way because I want to be sure that I don't mess this up. And I probably will, which is great for you guys to see because, you know, you can see that you kind of have to work through it. So, all right, now back to this, what I was going to try. Control B, increase, I'm going to increase my fractions a whole lot. Um, what I don't like is I want more tapering in here, and it's, it's because I tapered it already. Um, what's happening is it can, the fraction can only go to the smallest edge, and because I tapered it up here, it can't do it as much down here. So I'll have to manually do this. And what I should do is maybe use the B key here. I'm going to select this one actually and use the B key. I'm going to shrink my, my selection and I'll scale this a little bit more. Okay, I don't like how much it did there, but I do like what it's doing. Uh, all right, and you can see I'm just kind of moving back and forth and I'm kind of eyeballing this. I'm going to select these two shapes and I'm going to tone these down a bit. And again, I like to use the soft selection quite a bit on these kinds of things. Okay, that's not looking so bad. I might come in here and do, do just a right edge edge moving here. And again, um, this is why I recommend working at a low low poly because you want to try to, you know, it's a, it gets a lot harder to do this once you get more geometry. So working at a lower poly starting out for um, will help you. Now, what I'm thinking here is I want to keep this this edge, and I'm gonna I want to kind of I'm gonna I'm gonna basically fl uh, playing with how this flares. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this get thick, you know, be tighter up here, and then then widen down here. And then I think I'm gonna flatten this face out. Yes, I created it inside a polygon when I did the bevel like that. Um, some operations that you do will create these. Just take note of them. Make sure it's a good idea to come back and fix them at some point. Um, just be aware of them. Like I said, there's nothing te technically wrong with inside of polygons. They just they cause problems on certain operations with like pinching and things like that. They should be avoided as much as possible. But don't like, oh my God, there's an inside of polygon. I can't do that. You can you can do that. Just know you'll have to clean it up later. And again, an inside a polygon, again, depending on your experience here, um, is a polygon that has five or more sides. So it's a little bit um, problematic for the computer to try to figure out how to divide that. It can do it, just not well. So you can see I'm just kind of moving these edges. All right. 
So what I'm going to do is I can either come back and bevel this inner edge, which won't get me very far. Um, I can also insert edge loops in here and then re-bevel that. Um, I can also bevel this. Uh, let's see. I'm going to bevel this edge and see what we get. Control B. And then I'll come back and select this one and Control B. And then I'm going to create the fraction. And let's see what we got here. We're getting there. So you can see I'm, this one's taking a little bit more work to get rounded out. And again, this is where the slide edge would come in handy. And I'll probably have to soften the normals as well, if you remember that from before. I'm just trying different things here. For example, I don't like what it did here. So remember, if you don't like something, you select those edges, control delete to get rid of those edges. Make that what I'm doing. There we go. I think I got what I want now. All right, let's see if this looks any good. I'm going to select these edges just because I think I have some hard edges in there. And then I'm going to select these edges and then I'm going to use soften edge, again, which is under mesh display, soften edge. And we can see what this looks like. Eh, it's okay. Um, you can also do things called, like collapsing edges, which I might try here. Um, so what I'm going to try here is, let me move this out so you guys can see the whole thing, is I'm going to select this edge ring. It's really tiny up here, but this middle ring. And I'm going to round this out by collapsing this. So what you can do is you can select any edge along this edge ring here. So this is an edge ring because it's going. And I don't know where this is in the menu. I can't even remember anymore. How I typically do this is I hold down control and right click and go to edge ring utilities. So I'm right clicking and holding and holding down control. Edge ring utilities to edge ring. And then you, you can see select that edge ring. So I have the edge ring all selected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this one. And that's found under um, mesh, edit mesh, collapse. And it'll mer basically merge the, each edge individually by itself to get something like that. So each edge gets merged a little bit. And technically, if I want to get rid of this edge, I could. I don't think I will. So I might, I might try to round these out a little bit more. So you can see I'm, I'm rounding this out a little bit more. I didn't like how it was, it was more flat, so I got rid of that. So you can see, we kind of got this edge going. And I think it needs a little, few more divisions along this, this side to kind of round it up going like that. But I'll do that later. Um, the bottom edge, I think I'm going to do this one simple. This is going to be a simple bevel. Just control B. Let me increase the fraction a bit. Again, I'm OK with it. I actually kind of like that like how it just goes into nothing right there. Um, if you do the fraction to one, note that it does not actually merge these ones. So you can see, maybe it does now. Guess it does. I'm incorrect. So it actually does merge those now. All right, so it merged those into a, a, the top one into one. So you can see, there's that. I don't mind that at all. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I like the hard edge of it, but I do like the, the overall shape of it. What I think I might do is I might double click this edge and this edge and soften those. And yeah, keep the, the hard edge just down here. Okay. Um, you know, you might not like it. Um, I and I, I have my you know, I'd like to, to be a little bit better, but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and move along. Um, and I'm gonna you know round out this form a little bit more the other directions and then uh, you know, call that that good. Um, this particular one, I'm going to keep it just in case for some reason if I didn't like it or if I needed to get back, I could. Um, you can hide things in Maya by just selecting it and hitting Control H. You can see in my outliner it turns dark gray. It's disappeared. If you ever need to bring it back, you select it in the outliner and hit Shift H to bring it back. So Control H to hide, Shift H to bring it back, or if you like menus, it is found under Display, hide, selection, and 
show selection. Okay, so last couple things here on this one. Let's get this put in here. You can see I do have, I do need to bring this, this edge back farther because it's not going into the, the object. So I'll just go ahead and grab the verts of this. And I'm going to move these back into the object. And then I'm going to come in here and round it out more where I think it needs rounding. And I'm just going to use the multi-cut tool for this. Or I actually can bevel in this direction as well. So let's try that. So it's a little bit different. So maybe I'll round it out here. Control B. You know, so you can see. I increase the fractions a bit. Increase the segments. Same thing here. And I'm going to slide this down first though before I bevel this. Maybe I won't bevel it. Yeah, sure. Why not? I, I beveled it. Um, I think we got too many, too much geometry in here for my me getting bubble happy. So maybe I'll get rid of this one. I, I'm, I'm moving away from my my reference, but I do like this sh this this thinner shape. Or thinner shape. I mean the rounder shape. Now. Um, I'm not going to get into like efficiency modeling, but I could collapse some of these into tries. Oh, why not? Um, if you know you're not going to do any divisions in here, and again, you're maybe you're working for like you know try to, to for optimization, you can use that collapse method I showed you earlier and collapse some of these to tries. Um, this is very popular on things like tires and things like that. But what you can do is like I don't need as many down here. I need more on this side less on this side. So what we could do is we could collapse this and I tend to, I think I'm gonna just collapse here first and we'll see. So I'm gonna select these edges and what you, I'm in is I'm in the front view and I can see I drag that, selected that edge and the back edge. So I'm in the front view. Little box, drag a little box, select them both. And then I'm gonna go uh, edit mesh, collapse. And then I'm gonna maybe skip a couple, collapse. You know, anywhere you think you can get, you know, you want, you know, I think I'm going to, you know, maybe I'll skip, you know, every other one or something like that. Now, this is bad for if you want to do anything inside this. So this is bad for this. If you want to do this, this would be harder to work with. Um, but you still have the edges if you want to work with the, the, especially the inner edges. This would be bad to work with as well. Um, but you know that's again your call. If you want to optimize this some more, you can you can do that. Now, I'm not going to come in here and say which one's right or wrong. Just you know, just know that it has its advantages. Again, if you're doing like video games, sometimes you want to get those poly counts down, um, something like that. I think that looks a little bit cleaner. Um, but you know, you it, it's totally your option. So you can see I kind of kind of did that. So not necessary for this, what we're doing in this exercise, but you know, you totally can. And then I think the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I should fix this. So I'm going to use the multi-cut tool. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go ahead and, well, actually I'm going to go ahead and use the edge thing and collapse these again, just for the heck of it, since we're talking about this tool. Um, so mesh tool, uh, sorry, edit mesh, mesh, where are you, collapse, there, edit mesh, collapse, and then maybe I'll go ahead and use the multi-cut tool, uh, why not, so let's say, hold on, shift, and I'll do this, which isn't great geometry, but whatever. And I didn't like what it did there. Let me, I, met, mess, I messed up. Collapse that one. Why aren't you working? Let me take a look here. What's going on here? All right. So the other tool, if you for whatever reason my collapse wasn't working, other tool you can try is you can try the merge tool, which is a great tool. Or, sorry, they changed the name to target weld. So under mesh tools target weld, I can click on this, and if I'm in, you can do this in multiple modes. But if I'm in vertex mode. I can grab one vert, click and drag to the other vert, and it will merge it. So it moves it to there and merges it. So technically these are quads, they're just not very good ones. Um, 
So you can see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. These would not um, honestly pinch well, but I don't plan on smoothing this. Um, so you can see if it's, we were to smooth it, it doesn't look really well. It looks okay. Um, I, again, it's just not 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 ideal. All right, that's good enough for now. All right, so I have this now. What you can do is you obviously don't have to to um, model all these out. Um, I'm just going to model one. I plan on having three, even though my reference only shows two. I plan on having three. I just didn't want to put one back here. I'd probably even angle these at some point, so but I drew them orthogonally. So this can change. Um, and what we can do is we can... I'm going to show you how to duplicate them, but please note that I would recommend when we get to the UV, which probably would be a later lecture, I would UV these, these out first, then duplicate them. Um, UV is the art of actually wrapping around textures on these. Um, but honestly, these might be just solid colors, so I mean, I could get away with just duplicating these. Um, so um, if you're going to put textures on them, I advise that you texture, you know, get the texture part done first, then duplicate them. Um, if you if you can get away with that, but I'm gonna go ahead and show how to duplicate them now. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, you know when we get to that part. So I moved the pivot point directly to this object, which by centering the pivot point. What I can do instead to make this easier. There's a lot of ways of doing this. I can do hit the D key, the Delta key on my keyboard, and enter what's called pivot point mode. Now, I'm normally on the translate tool when I did this, and I hit the D key, and you can see my pivot point, pivot point slash nomen changes very, very slightly. This is pivot point mode. Now, if I hold down the X key, remember that was grid snap, and grab the red arrow and drag this, I can actually move the pivot point. X was just grid snap. I can move it no matter what I do, but I'm actually snapping it as I go. So now that I've moved that pivot point to the origin, it's a lot easier to duplicate and or rotate this around the center of this object. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So once I've moved the pivot point where I want it, I'm going to tap the delta key, D key, again, and turn off pivot point mode, and I can just duplicate this object. So I'm just going to go check and look at my channel box here real quick. Um, whenever you're doing certain operations, I do recommend that you freeze them because um, what freeze does is set this to zeros. Um, this says this is the starting place of this, which I do want. Uh, this isn't that bad, but if it had scales and stuff in there or rotates, I definitely would want to freeze this before I did this step. And this is history, um, modeling history. I tend to like to get rid of that. Uh, modify, freeze transformations to, to freeze transformations. It's it up there. And then edit, delete by type, history gets rid of this stuff. Um, I'll talk about that in a lot of detail, probably just for the sake of time though. Um, I won't do it in this video, but I'll talk a lot about that in other videos as well, what that all can do. There's a lot of stuff you can do with freeze transformations and stuff. All right, so now that I've freezing, frozen transformations and deleted the history, I'm gonna duplicate this, control D, and I'm just gonna rotate this, because remember, I, I moved my pivot point. If I come in here and type 180, it'll put it on the other side. Now, if I do another one, you know, maybe I'll put this at, I'm not sure if it's going to be 90 or negative 90. So maybe negative 90. You can see it's on this side. Now, what I'm going to eventually do, I'm not going to do it for this one. I'm going to eventually make these all be like, you know, a three, a three, um, three sided, um, you know, fins. I don't think I'm going to do four. I'm going to do three. That way I can, I have more space if I decide to do the door. But you, I just wanted to show you that you can move these around and do those kinds of things. Or if you want four, fine, you can do four. Duplicate that. You can put the door maybe like here or something. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see. So just wanted to show that. You know, so that way you can see the other side. So there's my fin. I'm going to call that done for now. Okay, so let's do a couple minor things here. Let's get this ball on the top taken care of. I think I might go even more extreme for that now that I'm looking at it. It looks kind of. Not, I mean, the shape is there, I can read it, but I think it needs to be more pronounced. So let's get the ball in there first, and then we'll do that. Now, you can come in here and do create polygon sphere. It'll be done. I tend to avoid this, especially if there are, um, how should I say this, lower um, 
if it's an object that needs to be spherical, that needs doesn't need to be that dense. I mean, i.e., that's not that important. Um, I tend what I tend to do is I tend to use cubes for it. So I go to polygon cube, click on here, make a square. If you just click, it will make a perfect cube. If you drag and drop, that's fine. You can you can come back in into the inputs and make this um, a, a a perfect cube. But I do recommend you make it a perfect cube. So come in here. It doesn't matter what size. Say two, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth this twice. So mesh, smooth, and then I'm going to smooth it again. Mesh, smooth, and you get something that is pretty spherical. It's not as spherical as the polygon, but it does take up less geometry, and it doesn't have poles either, which is another thing I like about it. So there's advantages. It's not as dense. That's the main thing reason I'm doing it. This is great for like things like rocks and stuff too. Alright, I'm going to move this up. I'm looking at the top view. Snap X. And I don't know how big I'm going to make this ball thing. So it's a little bit tinier than my reference. But honestly, I think I'm going to make this this thing bigger. So I, think, I don't think it's easy enough to read to distinguish from a distance. Because like, it tapers too fast. So first things I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this vert and move it up. And I do think I'm going to have to um, expand this into a face. Because I don't think it reads. Granted, I can drag this all the way up to about there. Maybe I can get away with it. I think I can. I think it looks pretty good. I think that's readable. But I mean, if you look at this wireframe, I'm dragging this cone all the way up to here. So yeah, I can get away with it. Maybe I'll drag this all the way up as much as I can get. There you go. All right. So this brings us to an interesting point about our shape here. Um, sometimes we want the shapes to be one piece. For example, my rocket ship is um, its one piece, and the fins are its own piece, and I'm probably going to keep the fins its own piece, and I have this ball up here, which honestly, I don't think I need that to be one a separate piece than this. Um, you can do operation, you can group these, which I will talk about later. You can also combine these. What combining does is it takes the geometry, it doesn't actually sew the geometry together, i.e. The, like the vertexes and faces, that's something different. It's called a Boolean um, unify. Um, combining just take the, the geometry are technically their own pieces, but Maya will start seeing them as one object. Um, so if you select the objects, it doesn't matter the order, and go up to Mesh Combine, Maya will now do all the operations from this point on as one object, seen it as a one object, even though they're separate. So go Mesh Combine, and I don't like the geometry it creates or the, the node structure it creates, so I do recommend whenever you do combine or separate, which is the reverse, separate. I do revise that you delete the history on something um, that you do, so edit, delete by type, history, um, you can see I make a quick key of that. I use it by, a lot. They actually made this. They actually made a quick key for this recently. Delete by type it now has the Alt Shift D uh, quick key. So delete history and get rid of that. Because if you don't do that, it creates meshes and uh, combines and separates. Create a lot of stuff in your outliner as well, which is kind of annoying, unfortunately. So I tend to delete the history a lot on combines and separate operations. All right, so now I have this combined. What that means is now Maya sees it whenever I click off this, click on, whatever. It's one object as far as Maya is concerned. But if I were to come in here and select the subcomponents, they are still two distinct objects in that regard. So you can still get in there in some ways and get to them. It's just now Maya looks at these when, it, when in object mode as one object. All right, so that part's done. All right, we got that. And you, know, you can see I'm, I'm moving away a little bit here and there based on you know what I like. I look at that, look you know take a look back here. I like that. Move forward, move on. So let's see. Let's try to get this window in here. Uh, maybe I'll put some rivets on here. Try to do the door, this exhaust. Um, we'll probably have to break this up in two videos, but let's see if we can get this window done um, or, um, as as well. So let's go ahead and this should be relatively straightforward. Uh, it's a window, so, so we'll start with the cylinder. Totally just make a, a window polygon cylinder, and I'm just going to 
roughly draw in right here, start here, draw out a cylinder, tap the space bar, go to my view, I'm gonna hit the four key so I can go wireframe, so I can't see it because it's inside my ship, and drag that out. Let's move this out of the way. All right, so there it is. I don't like the shape or the size of it. Maybe I'll come in here and change the radius. Uh, there we go. Maybe I'll add, again, add some, a lot of roundness here. And then let's kind of take a look. So I'm making this window. Um, I'm making it um, flat on. Because, I mean, I'm not going to bother trying to curve it to this shape yet. In fact, I probably won't try to curve it at all. Because I'll probably just stick it in there, um, to be completely honest. And nor am I going to try, and again, this is just a choice I'm making, nor am I going to try to actually cut out the geometry in here and do that. Now, we could do that on some things, but since this is a cartoon rocket ship, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to stick it on there. Um, so I got this window, and I got this shape. I'm not going to worry about these these things, whatever I want to call it. Like, I kind of put them like brackets, so I was kind of thinking like, like more nautical uh, like the brackets you see sometimes on them, I don't I don't know where I got that from. I'm gonna I'll, I'm gonna do those as separate objects as well. I could put them in here, but I don't think I'm going to. So what I'm gonna do is let me go ahead go back before I start any of this. I'm gonna add a cap to this, so subdivisions on cap, um, so like that. I only really need one. I mean I need two. Sorry, because one is that. I need so I need that. And I'm going to use this as my thickness. So we should be able to double click this edge loop. We should be able to scale this. It technically creates one on the inside. I don't need that one. In fact, you know what? I'll come back here while I'm here already. Double click that one and control delete to get rid of it. There we go. Back to this one. And you can see, there we go. We've added some, you know, this is going to be my thing. Now, I could come in here, select this face ring, and then extrude this. That would totally work as well. You know, that would work. You can get that. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just extrude the inside. And be sure that you only get the faces that you need. And this is true for everything. Always rotate around. Look at your object from all your viewpoints. Then control E extrude. So I'm going to do it like this. Go in a bit. Do something like that. I'm um, just kind of, you know, like I said, this one I'll bevel. Mm. I'm trying to decide if I want to do like mix. I think I'll just bevel them both the same. Bevel. Uh, do I want multiple segments? Eh, sure. We'll do we'll do that because the, the the other parts will be more linear. So I'll do a, a you know very simple half fraction segment. Sure, sounds good. You know, very simplistic window here. And then these shapes are pretty much cubes. I honestly don't know exactly how you know. Like I said I'm just kind of I you know you know, working on this as I go. So maybe I'll try making some cube here. I'm only do one obviously. Four key. Bring this out. Bring this over here. You can see kind of going. And again, it's just practice. Um so if you keep this up, you know, try to make, you know, like I said, I can't, I'm not going step by step. At this point, I'm just kind of snapping and showing you guys these things, you know, how I do things. So I'm moving this to snap this to here, snap this to here, not because it'll be there. I just want to kind of keep these, you know, aligned as I work. So something like that. And I'm thinking here, um, do I want to go all the way back? I do think I do want to go all the way back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this edge right here. I'm going to slant it a little bit. Um, we can tighten this up a little bit too, as well. It doesn't need to be so so far away. Um, uh, I don't decide how far out I want to go. I went a lot farther, obviously, than my reference, <laughs> my sketch. Look at that. I think I need to thin this whole thing up. I think it's too thick. And then, you know, again, you always try to approach this from the viewpoint are the perspective that you're going to add geometry later. So try to get the shapes. A lot of people like to add a lot of geometry really fast, and I don't recommend doing that. Try to get as much, you know, of your the design blocked in. Think like sculpting from marble or something. You're blocking it in, you're chipping it away, then you go and add divisions and round it out. So something like that I'll do. And then what I'm going to do here 
is I have an idea, is I think I'm going to make it very round on this back half. So I'm going to go ahead and click this edge here, just one edge, and I'm going to bevel this. And I'm going to have a bunch of segments. Well, maybe not a bunch, but, you know, four segments. So it's going to be very rounded there. And then maybe I'll come and drag this down, something like that. And I kind of like that the way it is. Maybe I'll do one simple bevel here. One one bevel, very low fraction. And I want to make sure these are hard edges. So we see we've got something like that. And then I'll come in and get the bevels on these sides. Um, you can see that it won't, doesn't want to bevel this because I'm double clicking this edge because this face is now an inside of polygon. It doesn't want to do it. That's fine. We can work around it. I don't. I'm not going to bother to cut this into quads to get so I can get an edge loop. Um, so what I can do is I can select these faces and I can bevel these. So remember, you 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 know you can you can definitely get to it another way. And that's the reason why we try to. The main reason, one of the main reasons why we try to keep things quads as long as possible, because it gives us options down the road. Something in. Something like that. I want all of this, for whatever reason, Maya is trying to make all these hard edges. I'm going to make these all soft edges, except for these two. I'm going to make these ones hard edges. I want to see what this looks like. It didn't really read, doesn't really read too well. So, you know what? I think I will give up and just make these all hard, or soft edges, I mean. Keep the bracket, the bracket or whatever this might be called, as a uh, soft edge around there. Now I do like what it's doing. I think I'm taking up probably too much space out here. Uh, I don't know. Let's take. Let me look back farther away. Maybe not. Let me move this onto the ship roughly. I'll, I'll angle it and maybe play with it a little bit in a bit. Now, you know what? I kind of like it that thick. I think I'm going to leave it. All right, so let's go ahead and leave that. All right, so let's solve this problem first. As you saw, I moved it in here. We have it kind of disappearing because obviously this is round. Granted, we could come in here and I'm just going to try it first because try the simple solutions first. Rotating this. And if I position this just right, can I get away? Yes, I can. So honestly, in this particular case, that's probably all I'm going to do. Now, if that wasn't good enough for you, um, maybe you want maybe yours, maybe yours is more extreme. What you could do, let me duplicate this, is you could come in here and shape this. This is how I'd approach it, at least starting out. You could come in here and shape this by maybe selecting the center verts here using the B key, the Bravo key, and I'm going to make this really big soft um, selection here and then maybe round this out some more. So I'm going really big on this this one here. So something like that. And in fact, I think I'm going to select both these. Something like that. You know, we can round that out some. Now, it ain't going to work as well on the interior part which is a problem. I'd have to build this a different way. Unfortunately I didn't do that. But I mean you might be able to get a little bit of it out of it this way or if you want to wrap it around uh, also vertically you might want to do it, it, this as well. So I mean you can give that a shot. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let me undo back. So let me go ahead and grab it, the, the line horizontally. And this is what I mean by you have to constantly kind of try, you know, you know because like sometimes these things, uh, I think I'm gonna have to do them individually. Um, you have to kind of try these things out. What am I having selected here? All right, try this again. Let me turn tone this down, and then we want to do this vertically as well because we want. And I did a really bad job on this. But you can see what we'd have to do is we'd have to divide this up, not into this this thing. We'd actually have to divide this up more. 
and I don't want to do that first on for this thing. Like I said, the, the windows to me aren't as, as important. So maybe I'll do that in a future video. Um, try something like that, but I, I think I'm gonna. I don't. I you know, for the sake of time, I'm gonna move past that. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 180 here. Oops, I think we have a, we have a rotation on here. Actually, you know what? Doesn't matter. I'm gonna do this a different way. Um. So let's do this. I was gonna. I can. I I could come in here and do the rotation trick again that I showed you. You know, put this in the center, rotate. Um, that would perhaps be easier, ironically, in this one. Because you got to, again, remember, it's easier if you line this up to a grid if you, before you do that. Something like that. Then what I would do is I would do, you know, move the pivot point. Oh, it's not, I said line it up to a grid, and I don't have it lined up to a grid. F key, remember, frame selected. Okay, so with that, I moved it in a little bit actually. I kind of like that. All right. So, what you could do is we move this pivot point to be on the uh, the origin of wherever we want to rotate around. We would duplicate this and we could, you know, do again, do increments like that. But just to showcase another way of doing this, um, unfortunately, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I would honestly do it this way, you know, but I'm just going to show another way. Is you still have to do the setup where you move the pivot point. You still should delete the history. You should still freeze the transformations. But you could do the mirror options, which are found under uh, mesh mirror. Oops, I think I might accidentally clicked on it. So mesh mirror option box, and you can mirror it based on its position. Um, I, if you haven't, you're not familiar with all the, the axes yet, um, I would watch a, be a beginning video on that. I think I talk in more detail, but you know, green is up, which is Y, X is red, which is X, and blue B is blue. So if, if I'm mirroring in the X direction, uh, we probably want X, and I think we want this to be positive. And then if you hit apply, all apply does is it's going to uh, do the operation, but it's going to leave this window open. So it applies if you're not sure. If you're 100% sure, you can hit mirror, which does the operation and closes this window, and then close just closes it without doing anything. So if I mirror this right now, it's going to flip over like that. You can see, you can see, you can use the mirror, and you can just mess with these ta uh, uh, the, these these toggles here, and then end or the x direct positive or negative direction. So you can see I can do that. Um, this is great if you want to mirror like a complex character, but until you get to something, you can you can do it at a subcomponent level. But until you get to something more complex, I tend to do just straight up duplicates, rotations, kind of things. Or the other thing you can do besides rotations is you can also um, use negative values in your XYZs to flip objects. Please note it flips in normals, but that's not a big deal. It's really easy to fix that. Um, so you can see it flips that in this case. Um, but in this case, I don't even do this, so I'm just going to rotate it. So I just wanted to kind of briefly show like there is other options out there if you want to try one of those like I said they're more they're be they're better for more complex characters um you you can do that uh, like I said I'm not going to cover that in this video but future videos I will or you can obviously find another video on that the other thing you can do which I think is going to is going to be really useful for you guys when we get to like the, the, the rivets is you can also duplicate in this method the way I do it right now and you can do repeat your duplications so for example, if I hit Control D, and duplicate this, and I rotate this, let's say 90 degrees, and I do nothing else. So I've, I've, I've duplicated it, I've inputted it at, you know, a translate, rotate, R scale, and do nothing else. So Control D was what I did to duplicate. I messed with the, translate, the, the transforms of the object, and then I do Shift D, it will repeat the transform that I just did. So I can just hit it two, Shift D two more times, and I can duplicate this. So you can see when we go to do rivets around this thing, so I'm probably going to add some rivets to this. Um, this will come very powerful. So you can see that's why I've been I've been leading, leading you up to this kind of, this kind of way of doing it. Is so we, when we go to do the the radial type duplications, it'll it'll work. All right, so I duplicated that out. I got these things once again. This is another case of where I can have this all be one object. I don't think this needs to be multiple objects. 
And yes, if you're you know you're wondering, you don't need these faces back here. If you wanted to get rid of them, we could get rid of them. Um, in fact, you know what? Let's combine it first, and then we'll get rid of them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select these objects, mesh combine, and then you can see it puts the pivot point there. And then I'm just going to again delete the history. Always, I always recommend deleting history on combines. I'm going to select the faces back here, and I'm going to select more than I want. Remember, this is I talked about this earlier. Select, make a selection, then hold down control, and then grab the other side. It's a really easy way to get rid of stuff. And you can see I'm just going to rotate around. You can see me rotating around. Do I want to keep any of this stuff? No. All right. Delete. And yes, obviously we don't want to see any of this. So you want to make sure that's inside the rocket. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select these verts just because I want them to be all even. And I'm going to scale them to itself in this direction. Just repeat, grabbing this little box here and scaling them a bunch of times. These are minor tips, but you know, hopefully you guys benefit from these tips. So I'm going to move this back over here. Tap the space bar. X key, well, X key can do much good here. Move it in position, and I'm just constantly tapping the space bar and going to my other views. And then I'm just going to rotate this. Um, you know what? Before I do that, duplicate, put it, bring an option over here, save a backup, Control H. I like to save backups. Rotate, bring it in. It's not going to be the perfect window, but it'll get there. And if I want multiple windows, which I probably will do, but I'm going to build the rest of this out first, um, I could freeze this, move its pivot point to the center, and then do the same operation that I showed you both for the fin as well as these, these brackets on this window. So we would freeze it before we do that. And that's, again, why you want to make backup copies, because if you ever need to get back for some reason, maybe you notice a mistake, sometimes it's good to have those backups. And I like it a little, this is a little bit higher, right there, kind of the more nautical rocket ship there. All right, um, so we're going. this video has been going on a while, so what I'm going to do is take a break and we'll finish up this the rest of the modeling in a subsequent video. And then we will also, in future videos, talk about UVing these objects and um, texturing them. So stay tuned, I hope you enjoyed what we've covered so far. Uh, there's a lot, obviously, that we covered, and, you know, depending on what you're doing, you know, some of these tools will be more useful than others. So, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Keep on creating, um, and see you guys next time.